Well, folks, we have yet another revelation from Maggie Haberman's new book. This one, of course, not about potential crimes committed by Donald Trump, but just really a very clear look at how Donald Trump used the office of the presidency for his own personal financial gain. According to an excerpt posted in the Atlantic this past weekend, Trump told Haberman, quote, the question I get asked more than any other question, if you had to do it again, would you have done it? The answer is, yeah, I think so. Because here's the way I look at it. I have so many rich friends and nobody knows who they are. What? Like, would I, would I do the presidency all over again? Yeah, I would. You wouldn't even believe how many rich people I've met all over the world and y'all don't even know who they are, right? I got these secret millionaires and billionaires all over the place. We're talking business deals, doing all kinds of crazy shenanigans and y'all have no clue, you bunch of morons. That's kind of giving up the game, right? That's admitting like, oh boy, I screwed y'all good. Use that office to make sure I had business connections all over the planet. And of course we've seen this, right? We've seen it with Jared Kushner. You get the billions of dollars from some of the worst human rights abusers ever to exist in the Middle East. And apparently Donald Trump did the same thing. And here's what's interesting because once again, it comes back to Kim Jong-un. Because after Donald Trump made that statement, you know, a little bit after, Haberman asked him, like, hey, do, you, do you still talk to any of the old gang? <laughs> you know, you talking to Putin? He's like, no, 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 I'm not talking to Putin. You talking to Kim Jong-un? And then um, he said, well, I, I don't know. I, I don't want to say exactly, but, and then he trailed off. So he's like, hell no, I'm not talking to Putin anymore. Guy's got enough problems over there as it is. He's losing a war. Okay, well, do you talk to Kim Jong-un? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, I just, uh, oh, God. Uh, what's with this weather, right? <laughs> it's crazy. I mean, could you be any more obvious that clearly you are still talking to Kim Jong-un? <laughs> I mean, my God, you're like a fifth grader trying to get out of trouble when your parents know exactly what you did and they're asking you the right questions and you're just kind of, well, I don't know, uh, maybe, uh, maybe, maybe we send each other messages on Facebook. Nah, you're still talking to Kim Jong-un is what I'm gathering out of that statement. And it makes perfect sense, right? Donald Trump talking about, I've made a lot of rich friends. Well, Kim Jong-un controls all of North Korea. I'd say the guy's got some money out there. There's great business opportunities. Well, Donald Trump specifically said after his meetings with Kim Jong-un that there's a lot of real estate potential here, a lot of waterfront property. Because it was clear from the beginning back then, and I even said this in segments back then, Donald Trump went over there to basically broker real estate deals for when he's out of office. Like we could end up with Trump Tower Pyongyang because, oh, it's beautiful over there. Like, who is going to be able to go there, you numb nuts? <laughs> like, you're going to build real estate? You're going to hype up real estate in an area <laughs> where most of the world's literally not even allowed to travel? Like, even people that live there probably wouldn't even have the resources to go there. So I don't think Trump has thought it through. But he did get to meet a lot of other rich people, too, that are now his friends. So... Who knows where we're going to end up with Trump Towers? Maybe one in Saudi Arabia. Maybe North Korea. Maybe Moscow. I'm sure folks are going to be lining up just to get on their planes to go visit these Trump Towers in all of these horrible countries that are abusing human rights out there in the open and, you know, leaving their people destitute with no other options, right? That's what Donald Trump wanted. That's what Donald Trump got. And that statement to Maggie Haberman shows us without a doubt, his entire presidency was one long con job. And the funny part is that he thinks he got away with it with nobody noticing. No, we all noticed. We've all been saying that since the beginning. So maybe stop with your coy little, well, I kind of met some rich people. Yeah. Those of us who were paying attention and weren't diehard MAGA freaks, we knew that from the start. So you're not telling us anything that we didn't already know. But maybe 
this will open up a couple of eyeballs out there and they'll realize they got played by Donald Trump for four straight years. And for the record, they continue to get played by him today. Hey everyone, this is Aspen. And did you know that for the low, low cost of $0 per day, you can subscribe to the Fair and Balanced YouTube channel. We also encourage you to like, comment, and share. But again, click that subscribe button and help Aspen. Oh, not be so grumpy.